Hi, and welcome back to the race coordinator race configuration tutorials. This is the last one, I swear. Um, these tutorials are meant for uh, to give you a high level description of what each of the different properties that a race can uh, that a race holds can be set to and what they do. Um, these are again very high level. We're not going to set up any specific race formats. We're not going to do anything particular. We're just going to talk about each of the properties that I haven't talked about yet and explain them in, in a little bit of detail so you get an idea of what the heck is going on. Um, in future tutorials, we'll set up specific race formats like practice races, round robins, step ups, group races, whatever, and we'll talk about the properties involved in those particular race formats specifically in more detail. But for now, um, we're just going to talk about them at a very high level. Excuse me. So, with that said, in the last tutorial, and this should be the last one, um, in this series, but in the last tutorial we went from audio setup and we skipped it because I knew I could get through the image setup pretty quickly so we went we skipped the interface setup and that's what I'm going to talk about now and this is a very important um, set of properties um, so the first one we're going to talk about is the race day XAML file XAML um, XAML is a Microsoft uh, file format it's uh, pronounced XAML um, it's, a, it's a markup language essentially um, that is in it's, it's a text markup language um, if anybody's familiar with SVG, HTML, um, XML, you'll find the XAML format fairly uh, similar and fairly easy to understand. Um, but it is the language that during during real uh, real time, race coordinator will parse um, to use to display the various uh, race day screens that you see, whether it be the actual race day screen or the leaderboard or um, the the race stat screen or the the heat stat screen. All of those screens are represented in XAML. All of them are user customizable. That's why race coordinator is considered completely skinnable in terms of what you can do. Um, you can change the, the, the interface around any way you want because you can modify the XAML files. So race coordinator comes with a bunch of XAML files that represent the different race day screens um, for like a two lane track, a four lane track, a three lane track, an eight lane track, um, various different ways of displaying the race, uh, you know, the heats um, in the race data for those different, you know, things, whether you want to sort the lanes by the lane uh, itself, so keep the lanes in red, white, blue, whatever color, you know, you've got them um, order, or whether or not you want to sort the race data by, uh, or the heat data by um, the heat standings, for example, so that's another way you can do it, so whoever's leading the heat would be on the top, second or, uh, second would be second, third would be third, etc., and, and as the heat standings change, so do the orderings in those things change. Um, you can do that if you want. Uh, race Corner comes with all that stuff. Um, race coordinator comes with a XAML file that represents the pra a practice race. Um, these are all important things because what they they allow you they want to show you the flexibility of and how cool uh, how, and, and configurable race coordinator is, but also, um, for example, a practice race really demands a different type of screen um, than a regular race does. For example, because it, it, you want to be able to clear lane data and things like that. So um, it's very important and it's it's really cool stuff. Um, specifically to change it you just um, rate all of the, the XAML files that race coordinator comes with are in the install directory slash data slash XAML directory um, and by default it defaults to a race day four laner for the race day screen that's the main screen that you'll do when you say race that's the one you'll see um, pretty simple there um, the important thing to know here is that there are you know like I said there's a two laner there's a four laner um, there you, we use naming conventions to specify them. Um, you can read the description of what I, what, how the naming conventions work in this description here. It's all in there in terms of like the 4L means 4 lane, 2L means 2 lane, what the word static means if it's shown there, what the word image means if it's in there. This is a fairly bare bones one, um, so it's a simple one, um, but you know you can get all that from reading the description on your own. I won't go over that now. What I do want to say is that the kitchen sink XAML file is a very important one, and that is a 4 lane, I believe, um, XAML file and it is very thoroughly commented in terms of what it does but not only is it commented so you can try to understand the inner workings of XAML and how it works and what to do if you want to get say a driver's name somewhere or whatever but it also shows every single stat and name and statistic and whatever that you can possibly display from the race coordinator system on the screen so it really throws everything at you from um, you know lab counts of course driver names of course um, but to, it'll also show things like miles per hour, um, gap time between the leader and your current and the driver, um, uh, lane record data, stat data, you know, race, you know, lane overall best stat data, all sorts of stuff. It's just a ton of data. 
it may be, it's a little too much for me, um, personally on one screen while you're racing, but, you know, you might like it as is, you can use it as is, but you can also use it as a model for what to do with your own screens. Um, and again, you can put any, as much or as little data on these screens as you want, they're completely customizable, you can have as many windows open in race coordinator as you want. Um, in the end, the leaderboard is just another XAML file that is opened by the first XAML file, so, you know, if you, if you look at the race day XAML files, they have a menu in them, and, and part of the menu is a way to open up a second window, and part of that is just specifying the XAML file you want to open, and, and so, you know, you can really go, go to town with what you do. Um, on the website, there's a few examples. I, I showed an example of an eight-lane uh, XAML file in which I split the eight lanes up into two four-lane XAML files, one that showed the first four lanes and one that showed the second four lanes. And the idea was maybe you have dual monitor and you want to drag one of those windows on one and one of those windows on the other. Um, it's really literally limitless what you can do with it. Um, the great thing, too, is that XAML is a Microsoft standard format. You can Google anything in the XAML file to get information on what it is, how to do things, um, you know, how to display images, how to, you know, draw rectangles, circles, squares, gradients, whatever. Whatever you can imagine, you can do it. So you want to put your club logo up on the race day screen, you can do it. You want to, you know, put your club name and text up there in some wacky font. If you've got the font and you've got the, you know, you can do it. It's just a matter of understanding how. And, and we're here to help. So if you send an email or posts anywhere that I see, I'm happy to help you with the XAML stuff. It's really very simple once you spend a little bit of time to get to understand it. Um, I can churn them out pretty quickly, so once I know, you know, a lot of times, you know, if somebody asks me and sends me a screenshot or describes what they're looking for, a lot of times in, t in 10, 15 minutes, I can whip one up that is what they're looking for based on, you know, the previous ones. Um, and I'm happy to do it if I have the time. It's really no big deal. Um, I'd prefer, obviously, the community to start doing it, but for now, um, you know, and is you know, really forever, I mean, I'm happy, I'm happy to help in any aspect, so... Um, all you got to do is ask. So anyways, the race day XAML file specifies the, the screen that is used for the main race. Um, it's the big one. It's the one that you care about the most. It's the one that you're looking at all the time. Um, I've got about three minutes more to go, so I'm going to go through the rest of these um, pretty quickly, although they'll go quick. Um, the race start XAML file is the one that specifies the start lamp sequence for starting a race. So at the, very, at the start of a heat, you get those five lamps currently in race coordinator that are, you know, five, four, three, two, one. The XAML file in there um, specifies all that, and there's a specific formatting of it to tell a race coordinator that it's supposed to be a five-second start, or, you know, it's basically how many of those lights you have um, in its naming convention, and you can see all of that in the current file. So if you want a six- or seven-second start, you can do it. You want a three-second start, you can do it. If you don't want those, those lights at all, for example, in a practice race, just remove this property altogether, and you won't have a race start. It'll just, you know, when the race goes, It'll just immediately say go, and you're off. Um, again, 100% customizable. You can do whatever you want here. You want vertical lamps instead of horizontal ones, you can go crazy. Um, you know, and again, in the previous tutorial, we talked about in the image setup um, how Race Coordinator finds the images that it's to use for the different states of those lights. And so that's it. It's that simple. Um, the Race Restart XAML is the same thing as the Race Start XAML, but it's the one used for restarting a race. There are you know, there are cases where you want a different file, uh, a different look and feel for these two things. For example, Race Coordinator comes with two files that will work for this particular purpose. One is the 54321 Go, that is the default. One is the Start Your Engines, a pause, and then 54321 Go. And you wouldn't want to use the Start Your Engines 54321 as your restart, because um, obviously in a restart, you know, I don't know, you just wouldn't want to do it, I don't think. Um, but you could if you wanted. It's just, um, you know, probably something you don't want to do. So anyways, you can spe it's specified as two different files. Again, on the restart, if you don't want the start lamps, you just clear this property and it's gone. Um, it'll just, as, as soon as it's time to go, you know, go green, it'll just say go. And then we have some images here. I'm not exactly sure how they ended up here instead of in the image setup. Uh, I think it was just my, my mistake. But anyways, um, these are performance-based images. Um, they appear on some of the UI screens, some of the race day screens, if you, if you say to, specifically the kitchen sink will. And this one is performance against your current race yourself. Is, was the lap you just did better or worse than your average lap time in the current race? Um, the heat performance is better than uh, how your performance relates to the current heat meter, the, your last lap, how, how it relates to the heat meter. And then the race record performance is how your last lap ranks against the overall race's best performance. Is that, you know, best performance. So green is good, red is bad. You can change this to whatever you want. The default um, race day screens don't even use these. The kitchen sink will. Some of the other ones will as well, but the default one does not, I don't think so. 
um, you have to change it to even see them. So that's it, and that's all the configurations.